Hey, Tommy. Hey, Kevin, how are you? I'm doing all right. So, bowl turning, huh? How'd you guess? I don't know, but it always gets me excited. I enjoy your bowls. They're amazing, actually. Yeah, I find it very relaxing. And a simple bowl like that, you can turn quick, and it's gratifying. It is your happy place, right? I yeah. mean, after hanging out with me. <laughs> That's my second happy place, yeah. Turning a bowl out of a solid piece of wood is always fun. But I thought we would do something different today. I want to do a segmented bowl. Segmented bowl. A little huh? more work. Yeah. But a lot of time I turn a segmented bowl out of scrap pieces or leftover pieces of wood. And when I say scrap, think of the cutting board that we made, the octagon shaped. Yeah. All right. So I had some of the pieces left over. No kidding. So we had that kind of three-dimensional trick that we played with the different color woods. This is just from the scraps? That's the scraps, the leftover, yeah. That's I mean, that's not my taste, really, the kind of bowl, but I say, why waste the wood? Yeah, it's busy. You know? But the idea is, I guess, little pieces glued together, but then you smooth and shape yeah, with the lathe. Sure, yep, exactly. Like I say, very gratifying. Okay, well, those are beautiful examples, no yeah. surprise. I presume this is the uh, base stock we're using? Yeah, I was down where I buy a lot of my wood, and this place had this wood right there and I looked at it I said that's interesting what is it it's awesome he says it's orange osage it's kind of like my nickname orange <laughs> orange <laughs> matches your hair perfect no, that's good uh, uh, hardwood I, I presume what uh, is that it's a leafy so it's got to be hardwood I never saw it before I guess it's grown in the northern part of Texas it develops a fruit orange but it's not edible for humans okay and this is a little, small piece of walnut that I had left over so we, I figured we'd do a segmented bowl with orange osage and walnut so how do we get started? We get started by ripping some wood down. Let's do it. Okay, so now I want to rip a strip wide enough for the bottom. And those are going to be little wedges, little triangles? Exactly, because I don't want that expansion and contraction all one way. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make our triangular pieces, and we're going to do that on the miter saw. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to make the sides of the bowl. So I'm just going to make some strips. Now I want to rip one thin strip to accent the bottom. All right, now we're ready to cut our sides for the bowl. We're going to cut pieces that'll go like this, little pieces like that, and they all have to be the same size and the same angle on each end to give me the diameter and the size of the bowl that I need. And then when you cut them, you're going to end up putting them together Yep. And you're going to have enough of these to go around and roughly create your circle. Right. And this bowl is going to take 16 of these pieces, and it's about 2 and 3 sixteenths, or 2 and a quarter inches long to Each long. One. And then All what right. about this angle here? That angle is going to be 11 and a quarter. Hmm. All right? Now, to do that, I made a sled. And on the sled, I have two pieces because of the different bowls that I make. And I set these at 11 and a quarter degrees. That gives me my angle, and I take this piece here because uh, I cut the strip off of it. So now I take and I put a stop, and this is just glued, basically going to give me my length. So I've already cut one 11 apart. I'm going to use this as a gauge, and I'll set it down here so that this edge is parallel with the sled right there. Long like, to long. Long to long. Hmm. Right there. Lock it in. Now I also took a piece of wood that does not touch the blade, and it's cut on a angle and what happens is when I cut this piece of wood the piece 
of wood will go through and fall off and come away from the blade and won't come back at me. Clever. Something tells me there's more here in this jig than there is in the bowl, but we're going to do it all. All <laughs> well, right. It's a lot of work. I'm <laughs> telling you, it's very, very time consuming. All right, so we have enough pieces cut for the top, the accent piece, and also two rows for the long pieces. So let's show you what we have here. These will be our top three rows. So you got layers like this. Layers like that. Now I want to make, because we're good, the bottom is going to, the sides are going to come in and taper, so the next row down, each piece has to be a little bit shorter. Because you want to pull that diameter in just a touch. Exactly. So now we'll cut 16 pieces, a little bit smaller. And the diameter of that circle will be a little bit smaller also. All right, so now we're ready to glue up the bottom here. It does start make you appreciate that when you look at a bowl that's one species, and then you look at a segmented bowl and you're like, oh, a lot more work yeah. goes into a segmented bowl. So I figure that some of the bowls that I've built takes me anywhere between eight to 14 hours. So a zip tie for a clamp, huh? I used them for a long time, and I've used these same zip ties. I've had them for many years. People always say, well, why you use, go through a lot of zip ties? I say, well, actually, I don't. I sand them or clean them, whatever I have to, when they get a little gunky. Clamp it together. And you have a zip tie tightener. Yeah. <laughs> of course. So now, technically, we have to go put this aside. We have to clean off our plastic, and then we have to glue up another. We have three more pieces to glue up. And then we got to wait for the setup. Yeah. All right. So now I want to get a bowl made today. All right. So I know how long it takes, but I wanted you to appreciate the fact that how long it takes to really put these things together. All right, so what I did is I glued up sections already. Very nice. All right, so I can show you the step. So let's start with the bottom. So it's glued. That is set up, look at that. Glued, and I sanded it smooth, okay? So the next step would be to take the smaller circle and glue that to the top of that bottom. Now the reason I do that is because I need to get a tool in to curve the radius on the bottom and taper the bottom. So are you going to turn this in parts? I'm going to turn this section first. I first have to make a recess on the bottom to mount it to the lathe. Right. Once it's on the lathe, then I turn the bottom at an angle. So, so you would turn base and row one first. Right. And then at why that is going together, I glue up the three pieces that are then going to sit on the top. Look at that. And those are all sanded flush. Those are all sanded. The glue's sides. all off. Very nice. Right. So then what I have is the bottom with a recess to uh, mount it to the lid. Yeah, with shape on the outside. That's starting to take the shape of the bowl right there. I've done the inside, and I've turned the radius on the bottom and tapered it slightly. So now when I put it on the lathe, I marry the rough turn to the smooth turn, both on the outside and the inside. So you can start lathing this? Exactly. I'll start clearing. I think we might make it a little bit, a little bit straight and then roll it down gentle, make the top edge, and treat it like a salad bowl. Okay. All righty. I mean, I already have a salad bowl, but you do whatever you want. <laughs> you eat salad? <laughs> Thank you.
So now you're ready to sand the bowl. Let's go from 100 to 240, inside and out. This is a sanding paste, and along with the white pad that you're using there, to really give a fine finish to that. Now we're ready for a food safe finish. This is an oil and some beeswax in it, I believe. Once it's on there, heat it up a little bit and just try to spread it. Got it? I got it. Don't drop it. I gotta say, this is my first time working with the Osage and that finish really pops. It's gorgeous. I mean, look at the orange is fantastic and the contrast with the top and uh, that beautiful contrast in the bottom, that is right. remarkable. The walnut really sets it off. It is beautiful. So, you know, there's an artistry I'm noticing to the lathing part, but there's really a lot of industry to the segmentation part. You really got to think it through. There's some geometry, math, I mean, and patience. Yeah, it's a challenge to get it to where you think you want it. And it's funny because, uh, once you form the bowl, you've got it all built up. The tool allows you to shape it in different directions and look what you get. Yeah, well, I can see why you enjoy it. You are a real artist. It's very relaxing, that's why I love it. Nice job, Tommy. All right, well, that is it for us. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silva. For Ask This Old House. Yeah. Beautiful job. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.